Hey everybody, I just wanted to make a fast video and uh, it was about a fun little subject that I don't know if people really talk about enough, but it's about headlining. Everybody when they start out in a band, at one point or another, they want a headline. They want to be the guys that are at the top of the bill and you know, you have your name on the top of the page and it seems so cool or your names are the last on the ticket or, and you, it, it's like a cool thing to do. I get it, everybody's been there. But when you're out there, you also have to think about what works best for your band and what's the most advantageous thing for your band and what gives you guys the most exposure and what gives you guys the most eyes really on you during any course of the night. Now, let me give you a quick backdrop on this. Over the last, we've been together 10 years in Crimson Tips, but the last seven has been when we've been out playing clubs and doing the whole nine. The first three, we were just like making music and either putting it on the web or just giving out CDs to friends and stuff like that. And we didn't start taking it out until 2012. And so we've been going for the last seven years straight playing all the places in, in uh, upstate and, you know, well, the capital region of New York. And along the way, we have gotten to headline, I can't tell you how many shows. We've got to open, I can't tell you how many shows. And we've got to be in the middle, I can't tell you how many shows. Here's a secret that might bum a lot of people out. When you are the headliners and you're doing these bar shows or even hall shows and there's like three bands, six bands, you know, the normal cattle call you get caught up in. If you're the headlining band, I can almost promise you every time you're going to play, the only people that are going to see you is your family and your friends, period, point blank. Half the time, the other bands take off. And if they don't take off and they hang out enough to see you, I guarantee you, their friends and their family, they're going to up and bail as soon as these guys get done playing or go outside, smoke cigarettes or go around the corner and get something to eat at a place that's better food than the place you're in. That's the reality of the moment. So is being the headliner the most advantageous thing when most of the people aren't going to be there to see you? And we've done that a lot where you're playing to your core group and playing to your core group and the people that support you and take care of you is beautiful. And you thank God every day you have them. But if you want to have other people see what you're doing and experience what you're doing, being the headliner might not always be the best thing. We've actually done shows where there's like five or six bands and everybody's talking in Facebook Messenger, working it out with the promoter and all the bands are fighting on who's not going to be the headliner. I'm not even joking. They are actually trying to work out who is not going to be the headliner because A, I've heard, you know, man, it's late. We got a long drive back to Boston or whatever it is. You know, we. This one has work in the morning. We got to cut out of there, man. Or, you know, we really don't want to go on that late because, you know, most of our people don't want to be there. We totally get that. In Crimson Tips, our core audience is basically, we have a huge group of family and friends. We have a lot of family members and we have a lot of friends and we thank God every day because they're what really gets you the gigs and in the door. And they will show up to see us and they show up and they support us and it means the world for, world to us to be able to do that but we also know the reality of the moment most of our, our our supporters are not 17 18 19 20 year old kids kyle who's on base he has he's 25 and he has a core little group of like you know people in their later 20s that will show up the rest of the people that show up at our shows is literally 35 and over and nobody who's 35 and over with kids at home and the whole nine yards wants to be out waiting for you to take the stage at 11 o'clock at night. They just don't. I'm telling you now. There, we can play a large hall, and if we're playing it at 8 o'clock, we have a huge, really nice crowd out there. If we're going on stage at 11 o'clock, half the time it's hard even to pass the tickets. They're like, oh, man, bro, if it wasn't so late, and blah, 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 and I got work in the morning, and all that kind of stuff. And I, we totally get it. We totally get it because it's like, it's hard for people that are adults out there in the world to, to jump off of their normal world and upset their whole apple cart just to come and see their friends and their family kick out a jam. It's, it's not the easiest thing in the world. So what we always try to do is we always try to make it as easy for them as we can. We will go and we've played big stages and big halls and said, please put us on early. And we've, we've heard, we've heard, and I'm, I'm not saying this in any kind of braggadocious way, but we're just lucky we have a lot of friends and a lot of family. And a lot of times we've moved the largest amount of tickets and they're like, well, don't you want it? And we're like, no, if you please keep us earlier in the gig, because if we're early in the gig, first band, second band, something like that, 
we will pack this place in. Now, from a promoter's point of view, it might suck because they're like, man, all these people, you know, it'd be cool if they could hang out all night, but they know the reality of the moment. They're not going to hang out all night anyway. They're going to take off when we take off. And even if we hang out and watch all the other bands, which we try to do because we want to be supportive to everybody, all our people are going to jet because they got stuff to do. And really, they'd rather make the money off of the tickets that we sell and get them in there, even if it's early and they leave, because really, it's the amount of tickets they sell, folks. That's what they want. They want you to move tickets. The bars and the promoters want asses in front of the stage. That's it. If they're all there early, if they're all there late, it doesn't matter. They just want the hard ticket sales. And I get it. They're in there. They're trying to make a living. It's a business. You know, I don't begrudge or besmeech any of them. It's, it's their thing. It's what they have to do. So if we tell them, listen, we can guarantee you this amount of people at 8 o'clock, but this amount of people at 11 o'clock, they will say, you guys can do whatever the hell you want, and you can go on at any time you want if you can bring the most people at that time zone. Anyway, I guess this rant is just to remind people that it looks cool to be the headliner, it looks cool to do the thing, and it looks cool to all that kind of stuff. But the biggest thing for you to be able to do is A, make it the most fun and most enjoyable for all the people that you have. And those are your your family and your friends and your supporters and the people that wind up following your band because they know you're gonna put on a kick-ass show every night. And if your core audience is a certain age and they work in a certain time zone, you have to put on your show for that time zone. You have to be more accommodating to them. It ain't that they're lucky to come and see you. You're lucky that they're showing up. So if that's the case, you gotta make it so that's more for them and on their schedule than it'll ever be for yours. So just wanted to say, headlining is cool. We've all done it. We've been there a lot of times. But headlining to a small crowd of just family and friends, when you can headline to a bigger crowd of family and friends earlier in the night, and all the other bands people are going to see you, and all their family and friends are there, and all the other bands are there, a lot of times it just makes more sense. You know what I mean? Might not look as cute on the flyer, but it makes a hell of a lot more sense. Anyway, people, I'm just throwing that out there, just a random thought. I probably didn't put this together well or think it out that much, but always remember, it's what works best for the band and for the crowd and for the promoters, really. I mean, for whoever's putting the gig on. So to everybody, something to think about. Peace out. God bless. Good night. Talk to you again soon. Bye.